y'all, it's Hope at Crafty Hope, and I am here with some actual jewelry on my desk. Um, I've had quite a few people ask about seeing some videos of me doing my own jewelry work, so I thought I'd go ahead and film a little bit of what I'm doing today. Um, this is for my 100 day project. I think these are 78, 79, and 80 are going to be for the 100 day project. But um, what I've got here, let's see is a couple of discs that I cut out with just a disc cutter and this one I cut a circle out of the center of it. Now it's not completely centered but that's fine. I'm going to work with it. I kind of like the, the neat geometric shape and I'm going to try riveting these two together. So these are all experiments. Here are another couple of discs I cut out. These I did acrylic pours on. Ah, I'm zoomed in too much. And um, they're really pretty. But I'm going to add, and it, it's got almost an 80s feel to me, I'm going to add these, which are smaller discs I cut out and then cut little divots out of the sides there, just for a neat little shape. And I am going to also rivet those on there. And like I said, these have a distinctly 80s feel to me, but I'm just playing. And then this last one is also going to be a pendant, like the one over here. And it's just a little square trying to see will it go into focus there we go it's just a little square with date well it's a rectangular with daisies on it and I'm just gonna get some of the edges off and file it and something super simple with this one but this one has got this plain disc in here and I think I want to texture it in some way so I'm probably going to roll it through my embossing machine um in an embossing folder and give it some kind of texture but first things first I'm going to trim off some of these kind of weird edges so I'll show you that in just a second So to start this process, I'm going to put these ones aside and I'm going to work on one at a time. Now this one, for some reason when I cut discs in my disc cutter, I get a little bit of a bend on the edge that bends up and it's kind of sharp and, and all that. So I've got that on both of these. So I just take my little tin snips. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see maybe some of this a little bit better. And I've got, this is my little desktop trash bucket that I keep up here to um you know for little bits of things and to keep the cat out of it and that all of that so what i'm gonna do is take my tin snips oh and i'm also wearing um safety glasses because i don't like little pieces of tin flying near my eyes just in case so i am going to and there i line that up and just be as careful as i can to get that little bit of excess Ten off the edges. And some of this can just be filed off, but because it is quite a bit and it's not, you know, completely visible with the eye, but I can feel it and I know it's there, so I prefer to just get it off if I can. I've got it off of that one, so I'm going to move to this one and see if I can get some of that excess off. Now, I really would like for you to be able to see what it is I'm snipping off, but do you see these little edges here that are kind of discolored from the rest of that? Those are actually bent up like this, and so I'm just trying to trim that off. Um, and again, it's just because I didn't get a really clean cut with my disc cutter, so I'm just trying to clean that cut up. That is about as good as I'm going to get that one for now. I feel like, yeah, I have one of those fly over here. And it's nice to have a magnet, too, to sometimes come in and um, go over your desk if you're going to do any tin work like that. Well, actually, does tin... I'm not sure. Is tin magnetic? Let me check. <laughs> Hold on. I've got a big magnet over here. Let's see. It is. It's magnetic. So you can go around on your desk and um, try to pick up some of those little pieces of tin. I didn't get any because I tried to do a really good job of putting it all in my little bucket. So now that that has been cut, I'm going to take a big metal file 
And this one is huge. It's from, um, I think it's from Harbor Freight, actually. Um, just something to get, again, some of the bigger pieces of metal. And I'm doing the top and the sides going. I've heard differing opinions on whether you should go all in one direction or not. Um, somebody tried to explain it to me. It's, that's the same way you would do your nails. But I've never filed my nails all in one direction. So, um... I, I don't know. Like I said, this is just how I do it. I go ahead and do it in one direction because what's it going to hurt? You know, if if you're supposed to go, I mean, I don't know. So I just try to get some of that extra that's off the top. And I'm using this big one. Now I've got some little ones too that if I'm working in a fairly small space, like the inside of this circle, I'll pull out those um those other files to get in there but this big one covers so much area that I really like using it now I over file everything because I really like butter smooth edges I don't want there to be any kind of possibility that somebody can get um, poked or cut or anything with some of my tin so I am just trying to get now think this whole filing process is probably what takes me the longest with working with any of this tin. All right, still got a little bit up there on top. And I do use my fingers just to feel around because I get cut. I prefer that over somebody who buys some of my stuff. Now while I've got this big file out, I'm going to go ahead and do the other one too. Um, I like to work in batches with things. Now, I could go ahead and do these as well, but I'm trying to, you know, get all of one complete before moving to the next one. So... Once I have both of these filed with the big file, I move on to my sanding blocks. Now these are, um, I think I got both of these actually at the Dollar Tree, so I'm not investing anything super big in this. This one is um, a rougher grit than this one is. This is a much finer grit. So I start with the rougher grit to do it, and again I do, and it's really just super quick process just to try to get all those edges sanded. And I'm really just trying to work with the edges and not the center of these yet. You can feel the difference in these. I mean, with just going from one size file or um, sandpaper to another, it's, it's pretty amazing the transformation that a little bit of sanding can do. All right, so that's better. And then we're going to go to this one. And again, I am going to emboss this piece here in just a minute. So I'll probably take that off camera and come back. But I just want to get these edges. And I really kind of, let me feel the inside. The inside of this actually feels pretty good. So I may just run that with some steel wool in just a minute. Now this is steel wool from the hardware store and I think, I can't remember what the number is. It's like got a thousand written on it or something like that. And it's not like the stuff you clean with. It's something you find at the hardware store and it is, oh seriously y'all, that's what takes it from this sanding process to butter on the edges. It's, oh, it's heavenly to me. The, the difference in how those edges feel. All right, so those are all good, and I'm gonna go and run this through the embossing machine and be right back. So I am back, and I just took a paper embossing fo folder. This is from Doris, and ran it through my Big Kick. I picked out, um, I don't know if you can see the floral images in here. So this has a vaguely floral feel to it. I went with the flowers, and I came out with this. So that's pretty awesome. Um, 
I am going to, for the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to sand that down a little. And I always do my sanding on a piece of paper here so I don't mess up any of my other surfaces. Let's see if I can move some of these things around so you can see a little bit better. I can go ahead and take this off for now. Okay, and I'm going to take my finer grit sandpaper here and just do a quick rub over the top of this and I'm going to go ahead and sand the back as well while I have it out. Look at and I just kind of do a round because I don't want all the straight lines or anything. I really just want it vaguely. Now this feels a little bent so I'm going to Try to unbend it so I can get all of those crevices and bumps and everything. Well, I don't really want the crevices. I want the raised portions. So, I have sanded down both sides. And you can kind of see where some of the um, silvery tone is poking out as opposed to the um, brassy gold. So, I've got that. And then I'm going to, real quick... Um, distress that with some Novakin black patina. So to do that, I get a piece of paper towel. And put my tin on it. And here's my Novakin black. I've had it for a while, so it's starting to get a little icky. And then I just used Q-tips, and we'll get to this part in just a minute. Then I'll take my Novakin black now. Definitely use some gloves if you are new to this or, you know, not comfortable with using the chemicals. Um, I've been doing it for a while, so I just try to be really careful. We'll see if I can be that on the camera. And I don't even bother with anything else. I pour just a little bit in the cap like that. Let me go ahead and grab a tweezer there. And I am just going to take my Q-tip and we're going to see the magic. Actually, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so maybe you can see the magic better. Ah. Alright, here we go. And we just rub that. Oh, do you see how it immediately begins to darken? It's awesome. Just like that and we'll flip it over. That and do the other side. Just like that. Alright, I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to go ahead and pour that back in there. Get back in my bagging. And then I'm going to move this over to this clean portion here and just dry it off real quick. And here we have a darkened piece. Alright, so I want to seal that patina on real good, so I'm going to take a wax paste. This is Renaissance Wax, but also um, I've used Johnson's Floor pa Paste Wax, I think that's what it's called. But patina Queen also has um, a, a wax sealer too that, that works. So, But I have this and I don't have much left, so I'm just trying to use it up. So I just get a little on a piece of soft cloth. This is actually a the sleeve of a t-shirt and I rub it on both sides of my distressed piece like that and I'll put it aside for a minute to let it kind of soak on there and while it's doing that I'm going to put up these other pieces All right, so that's been you know waxed up, waxed but I'm going to polish it real quick to um, make sure that it's buffed and, and pretty. And that's pretty much it for that. Now I'm going to move this stuff back over here 
and I'm real quick going to use my steel wool on the edges of all of this just to get that butter. And I do that over again a piece of paper because the steel wool kind of sheds some and it's a lot easier to clean up if I just have it over a piece of paper that I can dump into my little trash bucket. Again, I'm going to go on the inside with that steel wool. Oh, that's fantastic. And so, when I put these two together, I'll have something like that. So, I'm going to take this and put it in here. And I know I'm going to do rivets to put these together. Now, I could just punch holes and hang it like this, but I'm afraid that it would do something like that and kind of fall open. So instead, I think I want to rivet. I'm still playing around with my skill in riveting, so it's, you know, it's a process. So I'm going to put up some of my filing things real quick. And I'm going to pull out my metal punch. Now this is a Beadsmith 1.8 millimeter um, punch. I'm just going to start by deciding where I want my holes. Now I know I'm going to need probably two to rivet the piece together and then one for hanging. And I'm going to need those all three on the same one. So what I'll likely do is punch all three in one of these tins, this top one most likely, and then take a, a fine tip marker to mark on the other one where those are so I can punch it in the second one to line it all up. So, but first I want to decide where I want all of that, in what direction I want this to hang. I kind of feel like, because this is punched irregularly, that this heavier portion needs to be at the bottom, you know, because it feels heavier, so it needs to feel like it's the weight of it is at the bottom. So I think that's where I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to start by, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and just put paper down here so it's easier for y'all to see what I'm doing than that bead mat. Alright, so I've got those three marks on there and they may not be perfect, but that's fine. It will work out. And I'm trying and I'm trying to decide right now if I want to go ahead and do just to make it a little more even a fourth rivet. I think I am. Not a fourth rivet, a third rivet, a fourth hole. I think I am. Since this is nice and big down here, I've got plenty of room to do the rivet. Alright, we'll see how that does. And again, this is all experiments for me. I am still figuring out the riveting and the metal working a little bit. So if this doesn't work, I will just write it off as a learning experience, which is what all of life is, right? Without failures, there cannot be any learning. I'm going to, and I always put my hand, much like when I cut anything, I put my hand behind it to keep the, try to keep the metal from flying anywhere. Because this little, tiny little thing right there will come out. Put that in my little trash can on the side. Alright, so that's hole number one. I'm going to place this over the top and I'll get my fine tip sharpie out again and mark these holes. I want to make sure it is as perfectly aligned as possible. I didn't just mess that all up <laughs> because I moved this and now I don't know which hole is which. Great. I should have probably just done three, lined it up, and then done the fourth, but oh well.
Okay, so what we're going to use to do the rivets is I've got a bench block here, and I've got it on a um, just a towel, like a hand towel, to kind of buffer some of the sound. Line that up, and then I've got it on a piece of wood to even help help more with that sound and protect it on my table. Now, a lot of times I would do this just on the floor because that doesn't shake and move like my table. But since we're on camera, we're gonna do it up here. Now, I'm using this tiny little hammer. It works. I've got a lot more control with it because it is smaller. And then these rivets are um, just a natural brass rivet from um, Vintage that I picked up some time ago. So I'm going to use those. And now I've been riveting towards the back with some of the things I've played with lately. But it makes it when I put, let me show you, when I put the rivet in, this way so I can hammer on the back you get like a really huge big circle here and some of the things that I've liked lately online have the actual hammered part on the front because it ends up being smaller so that's what I'm gonna try to do today I'm gonna grab just a little piece of washi tape and see if that helps anything and get these back lined up and I'm gonna tape it. <laughs> Is that horrible? That's horrible, right? Okay. Oh. Now let's get our rivet again. Put it through. And I'm taking a big pair of um, wire cutters and I am putting it down here and then I'm going to cut this but just I'm gonna raise it up a little bit just slightly I can't even tell you the millimeters that I'm doing it because I don't really know and then trimming it and disposing of that extra piece then I'm gonna hold down my metal and start trying to get this riveted together So that one is done, I think. Um, when I was hammering it, I tried to hammer and pull in other directions to make that rivet head spread to, um, to be in the right place. Now I'm going to go ahead and work at the one across from it next. And I'm hoping I didn't unline my holes up very much. So I will insert the rivet again. And I'm not going to tape this side because now that that other rivet is in place, there's not much I can do. So that is done. That is all riveted together and I wish I could get the light on here right so you could see it. Let's see. I've got my three rivets and my open hole down there. Um, and normally I think I would try to tube rivet that but since that's so small and I'm just going to put a jump ring through it, it will be fine. So the back is still kind of pretty because we've we've got all this going on here. And then the front has that beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. 